All right. I'm a little tired today. So reading's going to be a bit more difficult. And hello from everyone who stopped or who was watching from the YouTubes. Um, yeah, my stomach hurts. Fuck. All right, let's, I'm just going to jump right to it. Because uh, I stopped at a really weird point. It wasn't really a checkpoint. But basically, we almost caught him. But apparently, it looked like he escaped out of here. And the question is, how? How did he escape out of this? That is what we are going to figure out. After all, it is a great detective's civil duty to teach Scotland Yard the finest points of the trade. Gregson, look at his face. And Gregson seemed delighted with the idea anyways. Calling in now is the butler. Nah, dude. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, you deflected the inspector's glare with such fortitude there, Mr. Slums. Well done. Wisha, you're too kind, my dear madame. I hereby declare this great deduction to you. Really quick, I definitely want to turn their outfits back. I just saved it. I'm pretty sure I just saved it. Oh, it kind of just leaves me off there? That's kind of neat. Kinda cool. Kamisado. It's Iris' homemade dress. Ah, uh, it's modeled after Iris's. Shlomes is Japanese jumbo mix. I want the classic Shlomes. Oh, just like that. Kindly stand just there, Miss Susato. Oh, yes. I'd be delighted. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Schloens is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. All right, this is where I left off. Like, right now, all right, I recognize them sick, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be Herlock Schloens. Flip Furnace? Ow. Oh god, hold on. Excuse me. Alright. It's plain to see that this room is in complete distray. I may not do voices too well because I'm like really tired and sneezy and stuff. The bed, the table, the chair, the lamp, everything is upside down? Almost as if every item in this room had, until recently, been happily positioned on the ceiling before falling straight onto the floor. Oh. Every item in this room was on the ceiling. Are you suggesting that? Indeed, the key here. What the fuck does the key so safe? Is gravity, what? Oh, this is crazy. It appears that like technology has its last succeed in freeing us from the great pool of this earth. I don't think that's correct. Where well, the gravity of this room was reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness. Salute. This inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about this part gravity plays in this whole business. No, there's something behind that desk. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm running into a big problem. Give me a second, guys. I had a feeling, I had a feeling this was gonna happen. My fucking stomach hurts. Like a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna use the bathroom. And if anyone's watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna cut it. Don't worry about it, I'm gonna cut it. But I actually need to use the bathroom like really bad. It's like painful. I was like, okay, it's fine. And all of a sudden it just went <coughs> with, a, with you know, like a fist on my ass. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna let this music play on though.
crazy. How dare you? How dare you say that? Bad. Alright. I'll have you know that I have a lot of problems with my stomach. A lot. Okay. A lot. That was long. That was fucking long. Anyways, I'm gonna... You know what? Today's session has definitely gone off the window. It's definitely... Um... I definitely have not done a good job with today's stream, I would like to say. So, we're going to just relax. And we're just going to talk this one out. <clears throat> I'm just going to talk this one out. And enjoy my... So, today's enjoying time for me. You could say, gone to shit. Oh, thanks, Grenade, for sticking with me. You did jokes better than me. Anyways, <clears throat> I quite understand your sex... Uh, sex... 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 Specticism, Miss Susato. I too was curious at first. However, my conviction, my analysis was cemented when I observed this. Let me ask Diggy real quick. <clears throat> An anti gravity device almost identical to the one featured in the dream of mine only the other day in fact an anti-gravity device that's not an anti that by all means but then why does it have a clock on it the most relevant question indeed that is the timing device that controls when the gravity direction will be switched that is not gravity device there's a clear requirement for the engineer to be able to restore normal gravity automatically and the commotion we heard earlier from the other side of the door was the moment that restoration occurred Yes, the reason why everything in here has turned upside down is because of this anti-gravity device. You see, so you see, what we we need to look no further to explain the state in which we now find this room. Alright. The direction in which gravity acts here was reversed by Mr. Deborah before being restored to normality in an automatically fashion some time later by a timer device. Explode and there's always sunny thieves always play. A shalom is blown to bits. Yeah, that that's definitely not the case. Conclusion, huh? Now let us consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer's friend's aim? Wait, is Ace trying magic technology? No, he's just... Well, Ace Attorney has actually always had magic in it in the newer ones, but he, this, he's just an idiot. Indubitably, the greatest clue we have to explain this action is above our head. Ha, yes, how's that possible of footprint all the way up there on the ceiling? The question whose answer will lead us neatly to the truth, my dear madman. Madam, the reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because the nearby skylight. What? Of course, Deborah's aim was singularly, was singular to escape. After that, with that one chick from My Hero Academia out here committing crimes, right? <laughs> Otra. Uh, I have one trilogy Switch release, so eventually I'll get to it. That's the original egg, and that's my, one of my favorite ones. But I'm starting to like this case more. So when the room was upside down, by inverting the gravity here, Deborah was able to fall conveniently to the ceiling and make his escape viva otherwise an accessible skylight, leaving those footprints behind all the way. But the ceiling in here is very high, Mr. Sloams. If the gravity reversal was sudden, wouldn't Deborah have fallen to the ceiling rather violently? Hmm. Falling up is both scientifically and philosophically a rather interesting concept, I feel. But the man was cornered with nowhere to run. The script of the skylight was his only option. You may recall that I found this room earlier, which I believe offered a solution. Yeah, this won't be too long, only because... Oh, the rope. The rope. To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? I won't stay up too long because Diggy needs to sleep for work, and that means I can't really do anything. By anchoring one up to the wall, this man was able to lower himself safely to the ceiling, which explains how Deborah was able to escape this room before our arrival. He reversed the pull of gravity and fled Viva the Skyline. And personally, I should very much like to reverse the pull of gravity again now, just for fun. Do not. That's a dynamite. Do not. Okay. So this is the plan. So Diggy has to go to bed soon. 
So this is gonna be one of the shortest sessions I have. I am legitimately going to just get to the court case and just end it there. That's what I plan to do. So then tomorrow, when I take Diggy to work, I won't nap. Because I actually took a nap today, which was basically my whole problem. I took a nap. And I'll probably go outside, cook some food, and I don't know, do something else. Short, sh short, sh uh, sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a very short. So sorry about the hold up. If reverse gravity wouldn't affect everyone and not just in the room. Oh, we're not in there, though. Gregson. Gina. Susato. Everyone's gonna think, like, you're fucking stupid. She's completely spellbound. I didn't have a DS. Ah, damn. Oh, is that you have a Switch? That's good. Um, Mr. Shlomes, there's just one thing that troubles me. I shouldn't expect nothing less. You're destined to be troubled by just one thing for the rest of your life. That thing is... Is such a thing actually possible? An anti-gravity device, I mean? Do we have anti-gravity devices? We don't, do we? In real life? I would say that with man's current scientific knowledge at the turn of the 20th century... It's no more possible than instant kinesis. So he literally just said it's not possible. But your whole deduction hinges on it. Ah, but my dear fellow, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. However improbable it may seem. Huh. It's a marvelous line, wouldn't you agree? One of my more endearing pearls of wisdom. That's actually... That's actually kind of genius. He's actually big brain. He's like holding my hand. He's actually big brain if you think about it. I had Iris come up with the exact phrasing. My original was clumsy. Yes, I have a feeling I read it in something like that and Miss Susato let me once. Objection. Objection. Actually, there is one other thing, Mr. Shlomes. He's talking out of his ass. Ah, the spell's broken at last. We don't have anti-gravity, but we do have moon shoes. <laughs> moon shoes. That is the best next thing. The rope you found was on the floor, wasn't it? Indeed it was. In lonely coil near the wall. <clears throat> but... If Mr. Dumber had used it to escape in the way you describe, wouldn't it have still be tied to the wall? Did he cut it? Mystery is inevitably unraveled in the end, as I think you'll find do ropes. As evidence of such, you only need to look at the mystery we face in this room, now skillfully unraveled. That argument is as circular as a coil of ropes. I think perhaps we might need to give Mr. Shlomes the usual little helping hand. I'm sure with some minor corrections, the great detective's great deduction will lead us to the truth. Yes, you're right. And we must do it quickly before Anush Deborah gets too far away. If you're ready then, let us resume. Oh, he's that guy's fucking in like Africa or fucking Europe or like we're in Europe. In Japan or some shit. Like he's fucking gone. Herlock Shlomes logic of reasoning spectacular. Hold him, Mr. Shlomes. Alright. So we read all this. Alright, let's face this room. Disarray. The bed, the table, the chairs, the lamps. Everything is upside down. Almost every item in this room until recently have happily positioned on the ceiling before falling straight down to the floor. I don't think that's true. Every item in this room on the ceiling. Are you suggesting that... Indeed, the key here is... Whoosh, that was really cool. It's gravity. It would appear that technology has less succeeded from freeing us the great pull of the earth. But what about the... <laughs> the gravity of the room is reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness. The inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part of the whole business. Alright. To think gravity could have been reversed in this very room. I think the whole idea utterly enthralling. Only Shlomes could have con conceived in such an explanation. But the man himself admittedly that scientific impossibly. Scientific in scientifically impossibly. Yes, you're quite right. We must completely discount the idea at once. Ooh, that's unusually merciless of you, Mrs. Sato. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. The game detective himself said so, didn't he? While refusing to part with his dreams of anti-gravity devices. Yes, I suppose so. Well... Let's see if we examine this topsy turvy of a scene though more closely. Eh, it can reveal some proof that shows exactly where the gravity in this room was or wasn't doing. Oh, is it just really this upright base? 
There's no way it's just that easy. Well, well, I wasn't expecting to find a pretty bunch of flowers in here, that's for sure. Oh, look at that. I know, that slender little vase looks like about to be toppled any moment. The flowers are thriving. Somehow it makes you think of the fragility of life, wouldn't you say? To be honest, Mr. Naruhodo, something else about it made me a rather deep impression about me. Ah, uh, yes, it's... Uh, I was supposed to press Take X. That. Take that! I think this room was scoured. The upright vase clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo, you surpassed yourself by completely turning my argument on its head. Trying to impress your assistant here, perhaps? No one is trying to steal your spotlight here, Mr. Slums. Trust me. As you rightly said, those appears at a first glance that all furniture in this room is upside down. It's unass this unassuming slender vase is standing keenly to attention. And unlike the large safe, there is nothing affixing to the floor. And it's the exception that breaks the rule. In short, as much as it pains me, the gravity in this room was never inverted at all! My deepest apologies, deepest sympathies for your loss. Oh, poor Shlomes. Fuck. But the show must go on, so let us continue our deduction. Now that we know this contraption is not in fact an anti-gravity device, that remains but one other possibility. You don't say. Someone deliberately turned over every piece of furniture in here. Which might sound obvious, but leaves one mystery very much in salt. Namely, why would anyone choose to do that? Quite and naturally, there is an explanation. Yes, the reason why everything in there has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device? He's absolutely determined that this device must have something to do with it, isn't he? I'm afraid the layer of an exciting scientific explanation is too strong. Well, there's no doubt that somebody did this. Somebody did turn all this furniture over. So whoever did it must have had a reason. I'm afraid nothing comes to mind, although. Well, let's have a look around and see if the answer prevent presents itself. Oh. Look, there's something written on the other side of this armchair. Oh, yes. Safe. 432-5A2. Who writes their code like that? Safe? As in safe and secure? As in securable, lockable box, I think. Admittedly, more likely. Well, there's a large safe bolted to the floor on the other side of the room, so yeah. So what you mean? That was my was that my Dorothea voice? I haven't done that voice in a while. That's not Dorothea. That was um, who's the big boop lady in a uh, bartender game that I really like? That was like hubba bubba. Oh yeah. That was, uh, that was Stella's voice. That's what it was. No, Stella was the girl I liked, the cat girl. It was the uh, it was Say. That was Say's voice. Holy shit. I haven't done Say's voice in a while. Big Bob's. Now, that was Say's voice. I'm kind of surprised I even remember I did that voice. So you mean this number would let us open it? I wonder why it's written here, though. Take that! Take that! Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the safe combination. Big badonkers and moon shoes. That would be like the hottest. Never mind. I'm already imagining like really hot. Anyways, precisely. I believe, Mr. Naruhodo, that you have a very similar experience once, did you not? Yeah, last year when I brought a lottery ticket and noted the ticket number down inside the cover of a book just in case. That's it. Four people are forgetful souls at heart and always make a writing note of important information. No, it hurt like, I imagine it hurt like hell, but also look really animally hot. Uh, but just keep the ticket itself safe would have been more sensible, I think. And what prey happens next, Mr. Naruto, though? When the day of the draw came round, I forget which book I written the number in and had to turn my room upside down to find it. That's it! For people who are forgetful souls at heart and always forget where they noted things down. Not if you always note things in the same place. I actually won the second prize, you know. 
but I couldn't remember which magazine I slipped the ticket into, so I had to turn my room upside down. Thank you, Mr. Narodo. But I believe I've proven my point now. Which is a very similar scene scenario which have clearly unfolded in this room. Finding himself requiring access to a safe, the occupants of the room needed the combination code. You remember that he written it on the underside of a piece of furniture, but forgot which one, leading to the state in which we found, now find the room. Yes, Mr. Deber turned all of his furniture. Oxygen. Yes, Mr. Deber turned overturn all of his furniture in here, in a desperate hurry to locate the combination code that would unlock the safe. To find the safe combination. So he just ransacked his own room. Okay, so how do you escape? So yeah, yeah, so how did he escape? What's the what's the deal with the shoe print? Now let us consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer friend's aim at the moment? Indubitably, the great cl clue we have to explain his action is above our heads. Yes. How is it possible that there are footprints all over there on the ceiling? Ah, uh, a question whose answer will lead us neatly to the truth, my dear madame. Oh, we already read all this. It's because the nearby skylight! Oh, that doesn't sound right. Well, if a change in the direction of gravity can't explain it, then how did those footprints get there? Yes, I do feel that particular mystery has just become even harder to solve. I can't think of any way to explain it at all. Oh, 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 life was so much simpler in those Hecklin days when gravity could be reversed. It was minutes ago, and those Hecklin days never existed in the first place. Well, I suppose we must simply put our faith in Mr. Holmes and observe the area in more detail. Putting our faith in Mr. Holmes is what getting us into the situations in the first place. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> He gave us a fly freely in the sky. That must have been mankind's dreams for a century. And of course, the balloon is the invention that made the dream come true. Mr. Dever, clearly a man of dreams, used a balloon to ascend to the ceiling and planted his fleet on the roof. I take no pleasure in delivering bad news, but the undeniable truth is, it's clearly too small. What? I knew you were going to say that. My dear fellow, and you're twice the fool. If people could fly in such small balloons, why would anybody else manufacture larger ones? I despair your lack of common sense at time. I despair your lack of sense. Come on, time, Mr. Narodo. Sounds sounding real weird. That really hurts coming from you. Okay, am I tripping then? Really are a puzzle. As long as they're close to the skylight, it's really hard to believe that there are two are unrelated. But perhaps we need to approach this from a different angle. Apparently, Susato has a way different voice. Oh, am I supposed to examine this first? This is a gas balloon, isn't it? It's tiny, but it does seem to be a real balloon. Yes, I th think it's you're right. I think it's helium that's keeping it up. A green gas balloon. Why does that seem to ring a bell with me? If you can see it, there are footprints on this balloon too. Look. Oh yeah, surely that's a clue, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Though, what does it tell us? I'm not sure. Oh, there's a shoe up here! It's hard to believe, but there's a shoe up there, look! Ah uh, yes, there are more footprints in this little balloon too. Perhaps the shoe was thrown up there and became large, do you think? If so, the judgment of the number of footprints must have been thrown up several times. Why would anyone be throwing a shoe at the ceiling though? Oh dear, that's beyond me, I'm afraid. So, he threw a shoe? The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby shoe. And on closer inspections, there are clearly footprints all over the balloon as well. In other words, the aim was never the skylight at all, but the balloon. Wow, someone's just really bad throwing. But for what purpose? A green balloon. Hmm. There seems somewhat familiar data. There was a piece of green balloon envelope. A balloon's envelope. Envelope? Envelope. Envelope. That Mr. Noro and Iris found at the scene. And inside the green balloon that Master God claims to saw above the stage when the incident occurred. 
was the second birdcage, the crux of the whole instantaneous kinesis deception. You mean to say? If we if we assume that the balloon here is the model of the one used that day, there's a strong possibility that something may be concealed inside. Something our obscure was desperate to retrieve before making his hasty getaway. But but the balloon's out of reach. Hence why he resorted with the projectile, namely the shoe. Most probably, Mr. Deborah intended to tear a hole in the envelope by assailing it with the shoe. However, his efforts were throttled when the shoe itself became a prisoner of those lofty heights. Oh dear. We desperately need to examine that balloon. If only there is some way we can see inside. You may recall that I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers a solution. Oh, the rope. To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? No. Mr. Shlomo's have managed to bring the detection back with to the rope. Alright, I have to admit, that was clever. So we just throw the rope off the balloon and pull it down to us to the ground? Which is much easier said than done, I feel. And it could take us a very long time as well. True, perhaps we are more sh need a more surefire method. In fact, we already have one, of course, don't we? What do we do? We're just going to use evidence? I don't think that's We have a sword! Wait a minute. To reach the unintended destination, what better tool than this crossbow? That was found in the scene, in fact. In all likelihood, belongs to Mr. Deber. If the man had only brought it away with him that day, he could have avoided losing a shoe at such a critical time as this. So what's in there? I'm kind of nervous what's in there. So, shall we? Your curiosity is deeply stirred, no doubt, my dear fellow. We don't throw a sword, but you know. Uh, what is this? A notch Deborah has hidden inside this balloon. <laughs> what the fuck? What the? A wax sword? That's that's a piece of the head. Indeed it is. A waxwork head inside of a metal mask. A mask that is shut tight and fastened with a strong and quite impenetrable lock. So we can't see the face inside. Oh, but, oh, so it's protected. Just a moment. This, this is the head of the waxwork model? Does that mean? Oh, goodness. I see you, jo you joined the dots, Mr. Sato. Excellent. Uh, of course, the headless waxworks model. The case of the abducted Madame Tespa model that was largely solved. It was only the head of the killer that was missing. Indeed it was, but I believe Madame Tuspel will now have to settle her sizable account with me. Hey, Koma. It's been quite some time, Koma, has it? This, as you have now surmised, is the head of the infamous professor. Yes. But why is it here? This conclusively confirms my suspicion. The man responsible for stealing the professor from Madame Tuspel and returning it, San Tete Tite, earlier today was none other than Enoch Deber. This is incredible. Professor Hairbrine's case and the Waxworth deduction are they're interactually linked by Enoch Deber's workshop. Squats! You'll never see me do those squats, Shark. Well, it appears our logical pleasure crews have come to an end, my dear fellow. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, there you go. There you go, shark. Okay. Dude, what if we actually see who the face is? That's the scary part. This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you could remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone, even if a convicted criminal. I know, it's starting to make me live it, actually. Mr. Naruhodo, please. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden. You'd be utterly helpless. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite much of anger. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. No, well, here's the thing. If he flipped... If he flipped everything grenade, I'm assuming that whatever was in the safe, he took it. And then ran off with it. 
All that remains is to speak with the architect of this adventure. The architect? You mean Mr. Deber? It seems quite impossible that he escaped Viva one of the skylights. Obviously, the man must still be in this room. Oh, I know what it is. No. So, I, I know you missed a lot, Grenade. Deber is pronoun both a scientist and a magician. That safe is a secret passageway. Guaranteed. I guarantee it. It's a secret passageway. His location should be abundantly clear. If you simply reflect on the journey we've made together during this deduction. And Nush Deborah is right here, somewhere in this room. So, Mr. Nadaro, will you do the honors? Yes, of course. He's in the safe. Mr. Deborah's hiding place must be... Yeah, he's in the safe, dude. I think he's actually... I think he's in the safe. He's either in the safe or he's in the wardrobe. If you need to hide, there's no better place than a wardrobe. I stand firm by that. Uh, yes, you have some experience with that yourself a year ago, didn't you? We'll find him here. Mark my words, he curled up to a ball, trembling and hungry. In fact, my own hands trembled just thinking about making the discovery. Uh, never mind, Mr. Nutto. He could be hiding elsewhere, you know. He's guaranteed, dude, behind the safe. He's 100% behind the safe. He's, he, yep, it's the safe, dude. There it is. Before we gain access to this back room, we've heard noises in from in here. Which, you hear that? Yeah, 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 you, it just played it for us. It was the metal noise, which tells us that the engineer was still in the building at that point in time. Yeah, there's nothing think about it. There's no metal, there's no metal door. He was in fact searching for the combination. Oh, he was in fact searching for the combination of his safe. And pressed for time, made no attempt to right the furniture that he overturned in the process, from which we can deduce that his search for the combination happened very recently indeed. In summary, Mr. Inosh Deber. Is at this very moment inside the safe. Let's conclude Herlock Shlom's great deduction of this topsy turvy puzzle. Wow. That was like, that took a turn. That took a wild turn. I was wondering where I was gonna go to. Deduction completed. Elementary, my dear Watson. So, Mr. Narodo, I think perhaps it's time we ended this game of hide-and-seek, don't you think? By opening up the safe, you mean. But what else? Let's see. The combination was 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, 8, 2. Oh, I, I knew that. I knew that. All right, then here we go. Is he really going to be in there? Or is it going to be like another room? Oh my god, he's actually in there. He's actually in there. You found me. That is f fucking crazy. What the fuck? What what the fuck is going on? Dude, this guy's fucking crazy. Right then, sir. Mr. Notch Deborah, I presume. Co <laughs> do I do him injustice and give him a robot voice? Or do I give him like a really cool voice? Because he's kind of cool. But I give him a robot fuck voice. I don't know what to do with this way. This guy is, is fucking... Put down... Contortionist under his resume, I guess. I know, right? Nah, robot, this boy. Car, correct. Deep, deep robot. High robot. Steam powered giraffe looking ass. Dude, he's Q from the future. Dude, look at his fucking hand. You better start talking. You tricked Professor Hairbrand with that bogus machine you built. Nerd robot. Okay. And you shall have to explain for the thief of the waxwork for Madame Tespel as well. Whistle. I would be delighted to answer your many questions. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? 
has a screwdriver in his hand? That's fucking cool. Personally, I would advise that you deactivate my little parcel first. Deactivate? Your parcel? Oh, that's right. I refer, of course, to the time bomb. I left it in most prominent position. Uh. Ha ha ha. I see. Stunned silence. You're our, you are, you're, you are all caring up to die with me then. No! Is she gonna chug it out the building? Mr. Shlomes, with only seven seconds left to spare. That was too close for comfort. I got one left, one foot in the grave. Oh, there was, are you trying to get us, are you trying to help us get a killer or get us killed? Mr. Slump's deduction can be completely life-altering, can't they? Well, my dear fellow, that was a close shave. The resemblance of an anti-gravity device is really quite startling, I must say. Anti-gravity device doesn't exist. Whew. I want to push Mr. Slump's. Oh, man, dude. What happened here? So what on earth happened in here? Negative, you found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. I can't believe this man literally wasted 30 minutes arguing with an anti gravity when he was gonna fucking die. Dude, he's living on the edge, dude. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, well, we'd be giving it a thorough going over. Don't you worry, Deborah. What fails to click with me? is how you were able to locate my workshop. That I was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Whistling? No one whistled. Ah, that would have been me. Oh, wait, what? For some reason, I woke in a fine fetal today. Oh, no words. Just tightly squeezed chips. Certainly, I must have a screw loose, though I couldn't remember the combination for the save. And another one loose, as if I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture i written it down. We've also found the rope over there by the wall. Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly, the rope was too short. So then, I set about searching for a combination code to open the safe. That hard looks like it's inside of a watch. That hand it looks like the inside of a watch. I wish I could examine it. Ah, and burning the incriminating blueprint, don't forget. Regrettably, though, you failed to retrieve the head of the balloon among the rafters. And after that, you hid yourself among the safe, having first set this parcel ticking. Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the Belize. Dude, he was gonna let us all die and, like, take the brunt of it in the fucking... Safe. He's crazy. Yeah, Garrison just carries a bunch of fish and chips. Grenade, wait. When's the last time you saw me do this, by the way? <laughs> it's You've been gone for a while, haven't you? I got a death wish, have you? Right, right beside, have it hiding right beside a ticking time bomb. Please. Why do you suppose I choose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe. It's specifically designed. A dynamite explosivo wouldn't leave a scratch on it. So, in fact, that the safe was the only safe place. Precisely. But once you've climbed inside, you wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. The safe is fitted with a handle on the inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Ah, so it is. He's just revealing all his tricks, huh? I have always intend- Oh, whoops. What, what did he say? I have always intend to blow this place to smithereens in any case. Wow. Oh, when Little Girl was in the courtroom and there was a jury and some dirty cop? Oh. Really? Wow, that means you missed two chapters then. This is chapter three. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be playing this tomorrow in the middle of the day. So if you're here, I'll, I'll give you a good recap. But um, I'll give you a recap later because we're like, it's like in the middle of investigating this guy. So this guy built a machine 
and that machine killed someone and someone else is getting blamed for it because he was the scientist who wanted who 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 invented the machine but he built the machine but we found out that he's actually a magician and a scientist i just wasn't expecting an uninvited guest to come along and screw up my plans do you do you mean to say that you are planning to blow this all up no 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 that was unforeseen what what do you mean Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah, I calculated the time required for retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. But you're seamlessly, endlessly discourse in here through a spanner in the works. Oh man, Slums is a fucking... Look at Garrison, he's like, what the fuck, dude? Is something the wrong, Garrison? Do I have something on my face besides the usual eyes, ears, nose, and mouth? I think we have a fairly good idea what's going on here now, but what about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Is... is Deborah not the killer? You know, it's strange. I don't... I don't picture this guy as a killer. Does that make sense? Okay, look, 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 look. think about it. Okay. So the slowly gets suplexed. Okay, so this this I can give you a quick overview. So uh, at the Crystal Tower, they were doing a scientific event. Okay, this man died. Adi Osman died. Hair Brian created the device that was going to teleport. Basically, he was making a short range teleportation device. He invented it, but this man built it. Okay, right here in Notch Deborah. And he's both an engineer and a magician. Whoa, Nishi Legacy. Thank you. Thank you for the raid. I appreciate that. You're coming in towards the end of the stream, but I highly appreciate it. Thank you. My name's Larry. I play everything and anything. Uh, currently, we're doing a lot of comp uh, you know multiplayer games and um, and Ace Attorney as a single-player game. But hey, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? What are you up to? Uh, I'm just re-explaining this. Um, oh, you're playing the Greatest Attorney as well. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, I played the translated version, so I just recently jumped back into it um, when the game came out. But yeah, you just missed your favorite part, dude. That was crazy. I didn't like as like as I was breaking it down. I basically got it like Adobe. I was like, holy shit. But anyways, I'm re-explaining the story. Hey, yeah, dude. I fuck up. This is my favorite game, dude. Is I fucking loving it right now. But I have to go to bed early because Diggy has to go to bed soon. So I have to get off soon. So this is going to be a really short day. How's it going? It's going great. It's going great. Uh, for those who came here, uh, of course, you're probably watching it from um, um, Nishi's uh, side. But if you are interested, I do have an entire playthrough of the first game on a YouTube as well as the first Great Ace Attorney and the second one, which is being currently updated on, on a YouTube. If you ever miss it, um, Grenade, you can actually watch it on my YouTube. Just shouting out myself. Uh, you can actually find it here if you ever miss them and i basically bought them but just to give you a quick update yeah and that's that's what's happening so we we're trying to find a niche drubber which we found uh during the court case we found out what happened and basically that the body had to have been in a hot air balloon and that this man shot that hot air balloon and they have witnesses we have this kid who witnessed it we have the the man who sells who 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 manages the hot air balloon and we're and there's also a waxworks that was stolen from madame tuspell's museum who's also fucking gorgeously hot and i'm assuming that was the used as a body double her waxwork that's what we're assuming is the body double once in japanese well technically z i, I this is actually my first time playing this case but yeah i see i'm the last case for resolve near the end whoa Dude, I, I heard I heard this story as a combination of the Great Ace Attorney 1 and 2 is like probably the best story ever written. And my favorite Ace Attorney, it has to be um one of my favorite cases is uh, it gets super spicy, I heard. One of my favorite cases is the Rise of the Phoenix, the the bonus case in the first game. I fucking love that one. But I think out of all my other cases, I actually like the Miles Edgeworth investigation. Great Ace Attorney is your favorite one hands down now, really. I can't wait till I hit that last case. Um, I actually really enjoy the Mile Edgeworth investigation. Nishi, if you haven't got a chance to play that one, the Miles Edgeworth investigation one and two, they're like loosely linked, 
but it's so good. Adobo, it it is like hands down. Like I I played Ace, uh, I played Mount Edgeworth two off stream during COVID because it was like a depressed period of my life. I say my life, but it was literally like what like I beat the game in like a month, less than in like a week. And I played it off stream. And I just played it by myself. And I was literally screaming in my chair. I was like, "This, you cannot be serious. This is how it is. This is fucking crazy. I can't believe this is it. This is the twist. Like, I was freaking out the entire time. You gotta play it, dude. You gotta play it for stream. I would love to see your reaction. But anyways, basically, though, back to repeating this case, though, that's where I'm at. And there's a lot of nitpick things that are happening right now. And I kind of feel like this is a... I think this is a main, a main, uh, a main line too. I think this is a main line, um, court case, uh, that's happening. Because this is, there's definitely, usually when they involve things that are happening in the past, usually it, it involves to be a main line story. So there's a lot more to this case, a lot more detail to explain, um, Grenade. But yeah, yeah, essentially that's what it is. I watched the first few cases of Miles, need to finish watching, it's been a while. It is super good, Nishi. And I don't remember if the first and the second one are connected, but like, I think they're loosely connected because they they ref they make a lot of references to his first case to the first game, but they don't initially say like, "Hey, this happened in the first game. This happened in the last game." They just like, "Oh yeah, you solved that case. That was something." This Clockwork Man is had and his Clockwork. I like this guy. This guy's fucking cool. Professor Harebrine's instant instantaneous kinetic experiment at the Great Expedition, and the waxwork model you stole, which this head belongs to. That no ordinary head you know. That is the head of the professor. Clad in mask with a lock so strong, I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I've been considering carrying it around as protection, but that's enough. Oh, it's her. He's not gonna let me finish it. Fuck, I'm gonna have to finish this in case. Now, the thing about it too is that the thing that's questioning me is that supposedly the professor who killed Bad Zeke's older brother came back to life in the grave and Deborah was the one who saw his identity. However, Madame Tuspel is the one who modeled it. So why does Madame Tuspel know what he looks like? Right? But this game overall story is amazing. But downside to it, you don't get a definite conclusion in the first game. It's a bit of a sequel bait, but you could be forgetting how good it is. Yeah, which I think is fine, to be honest. Because I get, you know, we get it right back to back, which is awesome. But sadly, I played the translation version, so I was definitely behind. What's going on here, Miss Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I have sir, sole jurisdiction to investigation here. Uh, um, yes, well. Uh, Dr. Sithy again. So the forensic investigation team are here. And you know full well this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer access to him? Right? We can, yeah, we, I can just pretend this is just one long game and I'm busting a nut over here, right, Adobo? If Loring Strongheart knew of this, you'd be finished. You lot. Leave at once. Uh, my dear madam, there's no need for such a threatening tone, I assure you. After all, there's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Sithy? <laughs> Hello, Shlomes. Mr. Shlomes knows Dr. Sithy? If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression in our face, you're quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell you... Get out. But of course, we'll show ourselves the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Mr. Naderhodo, uh, yeah. It appears our delightful, entertaining investigation has run their course of today. But, but Mr. Sloams, let us leave this place to the doctor's capable hands. What? I said get out, now, all of you. Your presence here is not required either, Gregson. He's kinda, he mad. Understood. He's kinda mad. But I'll just say this once before heading off. If it wasn't for this lawyer and his companions, we'd never have found this place. And this whole workshop would have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set in here that this lot disarmed. Inspector. <laughs> 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 
Something giving you a chuckle, has it, Deborah? Ah, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. You are quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? Oh, is he gonna get away right here? <gasps> yes, you did disarm that one. Uh, what are you? Th that one? Yeah, you mean? Ka, 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 ka. Uh oh. Wait, is it gonna happen right here, right now? Holy shit! Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, there's one on the fucking. There's no way he's gonna fucking get away. There's no fucking way he's gonna get away. Holy shit, dude. Rip, right? Fucking rip, dude. It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion that ripped through the experimentation stage on the Great Exposition. Professor Hare Bryan's invention and all of its secrets were blown away forever. Oh, dude, what the fuck? No, I can't end like that. All right, if you guys don't know, when I started the stream, so so I'm I had to cut the stream because uh, I I bought these, and I had to take like a fifteen minute shitter. Like it was a really bad shitter. I had to take a fifteen minute shitter. It sucked ass. Uh, and like the no no no. no. And now I have to like. What's the word? Well, Diggy's gonna go to bed soon after she finishes her movie and drawing, so. Because I stuff got wrecked. I know, right? 24th October, 9 11. You know, I wish that wasn't a joke, but. I wish that. Ho I, I hope that's not a joke and that's unintentionally written. You know, explosion. At least it wasn't like September. If it was, you know, in the month of September with the exact date, then that would have been like. That's a very uncalled for joke. That's a very low ball of a joke, but, anyways. 24th October, 9-11 a.m. The Old Bailey's Defendant Antechamber. Good morning to you, Mr. Narhoda. Ah, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceeding? I hope so. I should be. Even I, with nothing to left to... Ah, good morning, my dear fellow. Uh, yeah, I hope not, right, dear Nate? I'm gonna do a little bit more because I'm really invested now. Like, I'm wide awake and, like, Diggy's not in the bed on the bed yet, so... Ah, oh, Mr. Sloams, you're here. Why, naturally, a true gentleman stands shoulder to shoulder with his friends in battle. Uh, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll see you later then. Now, Professor, we really need to remain calm in court today. Yes. Do you, do try your hardest not to enter the witnesses' stand uninvited again. Yes, I will. I will. I realize it was a mistake, but I. My dear fellow, I must interject. Apple flavored cotton candy. Dude, more like dirty caramel flavor. Uh, you're still here, Mr. Sholmes? What's the matter? Surely you overlook some praise, have you not? To be cast in my direction, hmm? Wait, sorry. Wait, what? I don't follow. Must I spell it out for you? I, the great Herlock Sholmes, the greatest detective of worldwide acclamation, arose some ungodly hour to be here. Now, first thing in the morning, a rare miracle, you must agree. Well, I mean, if I must agree, then... As you know, my sleep is unpenetrable. Iris had to employ her full gamut of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both my cheeks, punched me, kicked me from my bed, shoved a dildo into areas that I cannot explain, fill my pipe with crack cocaine filled my hat with a bucket of lube and dipped my jacket in carousel oil. And then she poured a boiling cup of her latest experimental blend on my face. And at last I was bestirred. That's one heavy sleep, bruh. Oh my, Iris has been busy. Iris doesn't have it in her to go that far. She's too nice, especially not the dildo part. I sense the spirit of a fellow scientist, one who relishes the infinite possibilities of blending tea. I am the one worthy of praise here, not Iris. This is my victory. I'm gonna need a lot of crack. Sherlock Holmes chronic. Sherlock Holmes chronically did drugs. Really? Sorry to cut in. Who's this? Oh, it's Gregson. Oh, Inspector Garrison. Gregson. Good morning. 
Gregson, my dear fellow, why the grim expression of this delightful early hour? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I've been confronted with the grimmer expression, eh? Gary Garrison, Gary Garrison. Dear me, are you gonna take that insult line down, Professor? What? 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 I, I don't know. Poor Professor. <laughs> Luigi Lewinston. <laughs> Anyways, I hear the paper you're the answer for. <laughs> That's like my best Luigi one. <laughs> what paperwork? He's always one. He's always. He's always at the bench and brings before us. I need, I need, I need to practice my Luigi accent because I got like a generic Italian, but I need to do Luigi. He's like a oh, hold on, how's that? <clears throat> oh, I took the liberty of requesting it use yesterday. I have a feeling it may prove useful. You wouldn't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this brought out of the archives. It's the professor's autopsy report. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That mass murders? Hey, I'm walking here. I, I got the British one down because I got to do Gina's. Who killed five members of aristocracy. He was found guilty in a closed trial ten years ago now. It was all done under wraps. And he was quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all here now. Wait. 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 I'm connecting the dots. I'm connecting the dots. If this isn't going to be solved, this case about the professor... Then the murder on Bakersville, the killer of Bakersville, whatever that book is, is about this one. And this is an unsolved case that Sherlock Holmes didn't get a finish. That's what it has to be. It has to be that. Because generally, the theme with Ace Attorney always deals with things that happen in the past. The only Ace Attorney that didn't was Justice for All. Just The last case for Justice for All dealt with a morality aspect. It was... Is this the right thing to do or is it not? But with all other ace attorneys, every single one dealt with an event that occurred in the past and you're trying to solve something that happened in the past. That is the theme of Ace Attorney Grenade. Uh, example, Ace Attorney 1, you dealt with DL6. You dealt with the DL6 case. Something that happened in Miles Edwards' past as a child with Von Karma. In the Rise of the Ashes, you dealt with uh, the Sykes or the Sky. You you dealt with Emma Sky and uh, Lana Sky in their past in the police uh, in the police with the police headquarters. The bite of the bite the bite of sixteen eighty seven. Wait, isn't the bite of eighteen sixty seven? The bite of eighteen sixty seven. Okay, and then there's also um. Sorry. And then there's Justice for All, which didn't have a theme of going to the past. And then there's the spirit. Then there, then there's the third game. What was the third game again, uh, Adobo? Um, Ace Attorney Trial, Trials and Tribulation, which then deals with uh, the prosec your 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 prosecutor's past. So you you fight you you're in the you're in the court case with prosecutor um, uh, Godot, and you deal with his past. And then trials of tri trials of tribu db trials of db trials. And then in the next one was the case of um, uh, Apollo Justice, where you deal with Apollo, and his past was the trials of cold steel. God damn it, the trials of cold steel, the trials of the sky. And then in Apollo Justice, you deal with the past case of. Um, of Phoenix because Phoenix actually lost his attorney badge in a court case and you have to figure out what case was he on that made him lose his badge and you deal with that case right there the trial of these nuts and then after the spirit after Apollo justice you deal with dual destinies but then deals with the past of two people the prosecutor um who's the prosecutor name the crow what do you remember his name Adobo and then Athena you deal with Athena's past and how she wanted to become a psychiatric uh, uh, lawyer, and uh, the past of the samurai boy, and it deals with her, 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 the death of her sister, I think, right? Simon, Simon de Quill, that's right. And that was that theme. And then after that one, you deal with, um, uh, and then in the spirit of justice, you definitely deal with the history of spirit mediums with um, Mia, and you deal with, um, um, Apollo's past one more time. Well, so because well, well, it isn't directly tied to Apollo's past, but 
in 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 his game but in in the spirit of justice you dive super deep into apollo's origins and where he came from and who he is and everything about it and then and you deal with the past that happened in the nation of it's basically like china but not what what, what was the nation call where the spirit mediums reside from i forget what nation it was called but it was a made-up nation but that was i think it was based off like chinese you know i think but yeah and that was that theme Kura oh yeah it was like Kura kurama like kurama or something kurama these nuts yeah you're right you're right, you're right. And then um, in the first Mount Edward game, you're dealing with a political scandal that has been going on and you end up solving that political scandal with, with current events that are happening that you're solving in the in the point. And then in the second one is the exact same thing. It's slightly um, connected, but loosely. And then you're dealing with a, um, a, a public scandal and with like things that happened in the past and you're trying to solve it and in fact you even solve your dad's case which is the crazy part i thought that part i busted a nut dude did you know about that adobo one of the chapters did you do you know anything about the miles of investigation 2 it's super good but yeah you you, you deal with the past in, in miles edgeworth's investigation 2 super good and yeah, and that's like the biggest theme about Ace Attorney is that they're always bringing up something that happened into the past. And like you said, with this one right here in the first one, you the first game is leaves you at a hook. It leaves you at the one of the biggest cliffhangers ever. And you're trying to find that out. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. Sorry, I, I just love geeking out about Ace Attorney. I, it's so good. I fucking love it. I bet she's going to come to the court case and unlock this. And this is going to solve everything for us. Redacted for confidentiality. Placidium. The professor. Dude, they don't even give us his name. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight. 19 of June. Courtney Stevens. Who's Courtney Stevens? That's it? Yes, much obliged, Garrison. Gregson? Garrett Gregson? You lowly lots of the yard just doing what we can. Us lowly lots of the yard just doing what we can. In the shadows of the great detective Sloan, of course. Oh, look, he's leaving. Well, then, Professor Hebrine, this is it. Today, we're going to lay it all to rest at last. I was getting the meme of Always Sunny when it shows the guy in front of a whiteboard trying to explain something. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Well, yeah, but, but that was, yeah. I wasn't explaining the story. I was just saying there's a common trope in Ace Attorney that they're always using a past case, which is cool. Anyways, I wish you the best of luck, Professor. I suppose he'll be in here today, will he? Deborah. Yes, we, susp we expected the prosecution to summon him as a witness. I'm still amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both so much. Counsel and the defendant, the trial is about to resume. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. This is it then, the final chapter. Funny, my heart's racing a little. My heart, my heart, it's racing. There you go. Uh, uh I've not felt this strange before actually. This strange foreboding, as if something's going to happen in this trial that I'm not ready for. I can't let that distract me from the only thing that really matters. Finding the truth. Bum bum bum! Suck my d I held myself back. Let's see. Ba 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 ba. Someone's gonna get popped in this trial. Watch, dude. That'd be crazy. Officer making the courtroom. The ho, 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 24th October, 9:30 a.m. The Old Bailey courtroom. There's the assistant. There's Kazuma, supposedly. In the name of her, I heard my court. I heard my declarer's court is such a. Resume the public hearing of Albert Harbaugh. Here the professor who said who the mother. Are the counsels of the prosecution and the French spreading? Demo three. 
The prosecution is ready, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. Is ready, my lord. Oh, I'm ready. As promised, Lord Benzik has his apprentice with them. His apprentice with memory loss. And Sato's fucking staring at him. Yes, my lord. The prisoner is someone standing at your side. Ah, yes, my apprentice and assistant. The prosecution believes today proceeding will see the complexity of this case rise considerably. What the fuck? Yo, that was cool. That was fucking sick. What the fuck? I therefore instructed my assistants to ascend, to attend, sorry, to ensure the smooth running of this trial. And the smooth running of liquor, ref liquored refreshments by the looks of it. The way he holds himself, the way he moves. Almost, <laughs> he's like sweating his balls off. He's like, fuck, fuck, I can't tell if this is wine or blood. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Cheat. <clears throat> it couldn't be anyone else. But he's still suffering from amnesia. Damn, son. He won the case. What the hell was that evidence and a witness? So, if you don't know Grenade, Kazuma was in the first game. And he died in the second case of the first game. Sorry, spoilers. Um, reason being, uh, stuff happened. He died. He, I, was his friend who, who, who snuck on board. I was his friend who snuck on board to go with him to Britain. But he died during that place. He died during on the way there. So I end up inheriting his dream and his sword. And becoming a lawyer in his steed. And he died. But. We are now claiming that this mysterious assistant who has amnesia. Is indeed Kazuma. And that Susato basically confirmed that. Hold on. <clears throat> He's so sorry for me, so there's really nothing to do at the moment. I know, but... Oh, this is so very hard. So yeah, so supposedly they're saying it's Kazuma. It was proof that the Mercedes had done a fine job. I was fine at the mind. I don't have a I understand you have successfully secured the engineer who takes a part of the scene at the question. Yes, my lord. I intend to call him a, as a witness shortly. Very good. Very good. Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, all the genders of the court. Of the jury, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today. Are you ready? I'm willing to proceed. Is the same people? Of course, my lord. I'm sure you are all understand the importance of our civic duty. I do. I, I do so despise deception and deceit. I find it so very wearing. Whoops. Where to take a man's life? Where was a conjecturing trick? Where it is against the magicians? Where go not to mention the law? Any fake scientist should feel the wrath of God, if you ask me. Um, we have to listen to what says on both sides of the fence, and uh, uh and title on one, isn't that it? <laughs> Hold up, that's a damn kid. Bro, you don't know. I'm glad we won. <laughs> Dude, if he is a wall of fucking Ouija, I don't know who the fuck he is, Adobo. I don't know. Oh, I missed that. Damn, even kids get jury duty. That's right, dude. Uh. I found the parts of Russia machine. You better get our six. But before I lose, my lord, there is a report. I must read to the court. Yesterday, at the great exhibit grounds, the evidence of primary importance in this case was the super high voltage instantaneous kinetic machine, which was then installed on the experimental stage, was deliberately destroyed in the explosion effect by the unknown person or persons. It was what? How do you not know? It was all over the news yesterday. Why are you holding a gun in the corner? An explosion! 
<laughs> this is an outrage. Bruh, your voice is an outrage. Our law enforcement allowed to be in the jury? I don't think so. But this is Great Britain, you know, in the 1900s. Yes, I think this is right. That's all right. Try not to have a report of my office. I realized that the machine was blasted to spread the rains, and the wreckage introduced the ashes and the flames. Someone's getting popped, right? I here have a photographic print of the scene taken in the wake of the explosion. There's a hole. It shows what little remains of the machine. Hmm, yes. A terrible murder. Did no one investigate what that fucking hole leads to? He did destroy the evidence. Did he? That's a nutch stepper. The car will take this printer and I'm careful. A post-explosion photograph. So the middle floor has been blown up by the explosion. I don't think it's been blown up. I think it's been exposed. Late yesterday afternoon. The protection afforded to the machine by the Special Disposition for Scientific Equipment Act was revoked. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the invention was obliterated from existence. As such, this will become a very different trial. What? Wait, what do you mean by different? Well, we do have the blueprints, so... As it stands now, there is no evidence on which to draw meaningful conclusions. The authenticity of the Kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. All right, well, I'll stop after I hit that checkpoint. Socks! They're my socks! Get them off! Keep smelling your uh, socks! Fuck, I love the smell of feet. <laughs> my feet! My, my feet! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's no camera, but yeah. So you miss a lot of good shit. A lot of good shit. Do you want me to get you updated in a bit? <laughs> Indeed. I can, but I just took my other time. Okay. However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was the result of the actions of the accused. Or of that we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine and ultimately caused its loss of control. Whoa, 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 objection. As Lord Van Zeeks rightly said, this is a very different trial now. The fuck? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> the accused accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpire. He acknowledges that Mr. Asman died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst of the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Name's <laughs> The engineer, Mr. Enoch Deber, and the victor himself, Mr. Adi Osman. So, what exactly were those two men up to behind the defendant's back? The defendants intend to keep ex to expose that information, thus establishing the unequivocal innocence of the defendant. It's over. Look at me. Look at me, Zelda. Look at me. You're beautiful, cat. Thank you, Castle. The position of the person at first time will be silent. Oh, perfect. Stop it, you're perfect. At once, my lord. The prosecution calls the engineer, Mr. Enoch Debra, to the stand. Look at this guy, Diggy. Look at this fucking guy, dude. State your name and occupation to their court. Name, a nudge, Deber, occupation. <laughs> Hard to pin down, I would say. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck kind of lie? Several article, yes. I wow, why do I feel as though I've seen him before? Where? <laughs> oh, you too. I feel so. Yeah, he's fucking cool. He, you know where I found him? He's stuck in a locker. He's stuck in a safe. He put, he put a. He put a time bomb and then he he hid in a and then he hid in a safe while we were and then while we were like oh I wonder what happened to this room Sherlock Holmes is like it's an anti gravity device and we're like um that's a fucking bomb and while we were talking 
Apparently the bomb was going to go off and then he defused it within seven seconds. Oh. Like, yeah, it was fucking crazy. You're following the case. I got a calling I should get it in connection. What is that? The time. I'm going to walk for a while. He tried to Indiana Jones that sack of dynamite. Yep. The bomb structure is already sounding better. But that has no bearing on this trial. I assure you, cleave it from your mind. You're familiar with a public experiment carried out at the Great Exposition some days ago. The accused super high voltage instantaneous kinesis demonstration. God, I've had to say super instantaneous kinesis machine one more fucking time. I'm going to lose my shit. Yes, you could. Yes, you could say that. I am aware of it. Super califragic, super S califragic, espialidocious. Yeah. It was a terrible accident, wasn't there? Oh, and that's the guy that we think is Kazuma behind him. It was you, Mr. Deber, who constructed the vast machine used in the experiment. So, or so our investigation indicates. Can you? Confirm your involvement. Yes, I constructed it. In precise accordance with the blueprints. But that's all. Oh. Then the court would be very in interested to hear your thoughts about the machine, I'm sure. God, it's so fucking weird. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science, making instantaneous kinesis a reality, alas. What? Good gracious! Do you mean to say that the experiment was a bon bona fide fatigue? B bona fatigue? Is that your belief, sir? Yes, that is very much my belief. Such a the waste that it blew up. Oh, he's denying that. He's denying the fact that he blew it up and that it's fake. But we already established that the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjecturing trick. Objection. Objection. You established nothing of the sort. Wait, where's the assistant go? Oh, what the fuck? He's back. All that was shown during yesterday's proceeding is that the same outcome could have been produced by means of stage trickery. trickery. The defense must pro merely propose a method and not a demonstration. It's feasibly nothing more but, 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 but we procrastinate i feel witness you will now give your father testimony i want the machine that you constructed for the purpose of the demonstration understood okay and with that being said diggy is literally on the bed next to me so frame over uh i will continue this uh tomorrow because i'm in the court this is like the big part of the game. I'm, I'm definitely interested. Uh, we'll probably do this earlier in the day, more than anything. Uh, but with that being said, I am done for the day. I'm done streaming. And for those watching YouTube, I hope, I hope this one, I'm sorry, this one's a bit short. I'll get them out as soon as possible. And yeah, enjoy, enjoy your time. Uh, and take it easy, everyone. I, I love you all. In the meantime, for those who are here, live with me you guys can go check out uh who's live oh well what's bedu playing depending what bedu's playing i'll rate her oh she's playing league she's vtubing with she's collabing with other vtubers let's go hit drewby he's playing some 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 ninja gaiden ninja gator ninja gator so take it easy, everyone, and I'll catch you later.